Hey, I'm going to spend a few minutes just uh, showing off a project that I've been working on to show you what crazy shit you can do with a $35 Raspberry Pi. So just a quick little bit of background on a project that I've been working on. This is the SD bar. Uh, this is run by Christina. It's out of her own home. And basically, outside of her full-time job, she does facials for people who pay her. Um, so she had this room built in her house, and um, as you can see, there's a lot going on. Not a whole lot of room, actually, to kind of move, maneuver around in. And so this project was really spawned off with how can we make this room bigger and consolidate this stuff and put it into kind of a neat out-of-sight area. So here comes a big hole in the wall. Um, this was put in... Uh, by me, I just bashed out a hole in the wall, um, mainly because uh, there was this, this is actually a staircase, and there was this big open space underneath that was really not utilized all that much, and so I decided to make a little midget door, and um, the idea is, is that we'll be able to take all of this equipment and stuff, kind of consolidate it, put it on furniture that has wheels and stuff, and then stick it in here. That would make this room a lot more open and enjoyable and yada, yada, yada. So, so that was number one. And then number two was, well, if we're going to have equipment in there, we need to have a source of power. And at the time, there was no source of power in this area because it's a closet, right? So um, I installed these outlets. It's an 8-gang uh, or 8-gang box in there uh, with some outlets. But this is a magical outlet box. I'll get into that in a second. I know that I just can't stop and have to come up with new ideas. And so the next idea was, why don't we give some enjoyable lighting? So I installed this crown molding by hand. I will probably never install crown molding again in my life. But obviously what is unique about this crown molding is the lighting that uh, takes place beneath it. Um, there is a multicolor LED strip uh, that runs around and then is fed by um, some wiring that's hid, hidden pretty well um, beneath right over there. So of course couldn't really stop there, had to keep going and so the other idea was well let's provide some nice soothing music to the clients. and so. Um, I installed these speakers. They're just uh, recessed uh, ceiling mount speakers uh, that then wire into the walls, down, and over into this closet area. I think the worst part about this project, besides the pain with the crown molding, was uh, running all the wires. So there's basically the speaker wires that run across the ceiling, down the wall, along with the lighting wiring and the, um, oh hi, how's it going? The, <laughs> the breaker box is actually on the other side of this wall, so this is where we pulled uh, two 30 amp circuits for the outlet in the closet there, but essentially all of those cables then run down the wall through about six, seven studs, so having to drill through all of that was mighty fun. Now, on to the nerd part of this thing. So. Everything is controlled. The features that I mentioned it is all controlled by this single Raspberry Pi. Uh, to start off, I chose this, uh, I think it was a nine inch alarm box that I got from Amazon, set it into the wall, and then place everything that's required to operate those three, well, the lighting, the speakers, as well as this magical outlet box. So, First off, we've got an outlet box in here to control or to provide power for an amplifier uh, for the speakers. The speaker's up in the ceiling there. Uh, this also provides power for the LED lighting. This is a um, like a 10 amp, 12-volt uh, adapter. And then, of course, the power for the Raspberry Pi itself. And that's really about it. So just kind of going through the components, I already mentioned this one. This is a custom circuit board box that I made. It essentially just has a bunch of MOSFETs that uh, take in uh, pulse width modulation from the Raspberry Pi itself. And then it also takes in this 12-volt feed and provides 
the output to the LED strips, the the pulse with <laughs> the pulse width modulation essentially drives the 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 uh, brightness of each of the three colors on the LED strip. Okay. So this is obviously the Raspberry Pi. So as I mentioned with the lighting, these are the control wires for that. Um, and then we also have the wires for the relay, which is located in this guy. So inside the gang box, which kind of looks like that, at the very back um, there is a relay board that's uh, securely mounted which drives six of these eight outlets. So, so these, these six right here are controlled uh, on and off by the Raspberry Pi. These two are always on. Uh, we only came up with about five different appliances that needed to be remotely controlled, but hey, you never know uh, when the six one might come in. So that is it in a nutshell. Chose Cat5 wiring just because of how easy it is. And then I just crimp these uh, these connectors onto them just to make these connections nice and snug. Oh, and of course, the uh, three point five millimeter to RCA uh, jack for the audio itself. So the nice thing about this box, once I get this little mess of power cleaned up, is I can just stick this uh, little cover over the top of it. It uh, sticks out maybe an inch, looks nice and neat, and nobody sees my mess of wires and blinky lights. So as I was developing this system, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could provide some sort of a visual feedback on the health of the system itself? If you read the Broadcom chip manual on this thing, which is pretty lengthy, you'll see that there are a couple of pins on the GPIO that start up in a high position as soon as power is applied to the Pi, uh, whereas the majority of them are in the low position. And so if we use certain pins for our lighting, and in this instance I've uh, connected the red uh, control pin uh, to a uh, essentially a default high state, we're able to do just that. So the idea was is that when power is applied, we have a, a red glow on the lighting, and as soon as the operating system boots up, all the services start, and the Python control script is running, um, it will then fade the lighting from red to green and within about five seconds or so, it will then kick off. So here's just a little demonstration of that. So if I pull the power, hopefully I don't zap myself, pull the power to the Pi. Uh, right now, lighting is off, Pi is dead. Um, so as soon as I connect the power back, you will see there's a red glow. And at this point, the Pi is booting up. And it has just finished starting up all the services, and you can see it fading to green, which again is signifying that everything is ready to go. And then, of course, after a couple of seconds, it just fades off into nothing. Uh, in addition to that, you may be able to hear it, maybe not, but it also starts the music automatically. All right, so enough with the physical mumbo-jumbo in the midget room. Let's go over how we actually control this thing. So this is just a old Samsung tablet that I've got and we're just using the Chrome web browser so it doesn't actually restrict you from using a tablet you can use a phone you can use a laptop uh, anything that has a web browser this will work on so uh, divide it up into three sections equipment uh, that controls outlets uh, music over here and then lighting here so kind of the first thing to go over is the equipment itself so each outlet has an icon specific to the particular equipment that would be connected to that outlet so for example I've got a lamp plugged into the outlet that would be used by the towel warmer um, so if I just hit the icon the icon turns green to show that it's on and the lamp the lamp is on hit it again to turn it off goes red lamp is off. Just to show you, I'm not 
So hit that, on it goes. Hit that again, off it goes. So that's how it works with all all six of these outlets. Just hit it, just turn it on, hit it again, turn it off. Pretty easy. Uh, the next thing is the lighting. So we have this uh, power icon. It's green right now, uh, telling you that it, the lighting is on. Uh, if I wanted to turn it off, again, I just hit the button and it goes red and the lighting actually fades down. The fading I chose to do, I don't know if anyone's been on a, a, a Southwest Airlines flight that has the newer lighting system, but it's actually quite similar to that in terms of the timing uh, on the fading, but nothing ever actually drops. Everything is always faded. So again, I'll, I'll uh, turn it back on, turns green, and you can see the lights are now fading up. Now these are multicolor LEDs, right? So I can change colors. So if I go into this gear icon to configure it, I get a different screen with uh, actual colors that I can choose from. And I can also adjust the brightness of the, the lights as well. So let's say I want to go to, what's a good color? Blue. Kind of looks blue already, but here's a really deep blue. And again, we're not just switching right to it, we're actually fading to it. Uh, if I wanted to go green, hit the green icon and it will fade to green. Yeehaw. So let's go back to white. Now let's say I want to take this down to 10% brightness, I'll hit the 10 and it will just slowly fade down to a very faint brightness. Oh. Kick that back up to 100 and up it goes. Um, so that's pretty much it for the lighting. If I go back um, into the music section, so Right now, if I wanted to turn the, I can see that the music is off because the this icon is red. If I wanted to turn it on, I just hit that button. It turns green, and within a second or so, you'll start hearing music. Very soothing. Ah. Oh. Obviously, this is spa genre music. Um, but let's say I'm not into that type of stuff. I want to go in into some crazy rock and roll or something. Uh, so if I just hit that button, it will bring me up to an interface that looks, whenever it loads, there we go, uh, that looks a lot like a Pandora uh, player. So from here I can actually uh, choose different genre stations that are configured in the Pandora account. And then of course I have my basic controls where I can pause the music, I can skip to the next one and I can adjust the volume here as well. Thank you very much tablet for turning off. There we go. Um, so if I just want to skip, it'll skip on to the next one. And there we go. Healing Sanctuary. Ah. Oh. So that is the interface in a nutshell. A little bit about the Raspberry Pi itself. So this is running Raspbian Lite. I don't need X Windows and all the other bloated shit that comes on the full uh, version. Uh, we've got Lite HTTPD running on here for the web server. And we also are running two packages for the Pandora uh, radio streaming service. It's called Patio Bar and Piano Bar. Uh, Piano Bar is actually a text-based player that runs and then uh, Patio Bar is the web front end that I showed you a little bit ago that runs on Node. We've got our uh, Python script that runs in the background. And this thing um, essentially controls all functions in the background in terms of lighting, in terms of radio control, in terms of uh, the outlet control as well. So 
um, all of our functions for fading, blah, 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 blah. But uh, the short of it is, is that this actually runs or opens up a uh, local, uh, just a local host socket on port 8889 that accepts commands uh, for getting status of things and then actually setting particular statuses. So for example, if I tell net to local host 8889, I get a connection that opens up. Again, this connection is only accepted locally, uh, but if I uh, if I send it a G, it'll give me uh, the status on all the outlets, whether the lighting is on, the current color, and this is done in uh, hex color format, uh, the intensity from 0 to 255, and then the status of the music itself. So if I wanted to set the color, um, to something else, I would send uh, L for lights, C for color, and then we could do something like 00FF00. That will cause it to do the fade uh, to the particular color, and then when it's done, it will return an OK. Same with uh, setting the status on the outlet. If I wanted to turn outlet 1 uh, off, I would just do O zero and apparently I don't know how to operate my own code zero zero oh good lord outlet one off for a duration of zero there we go um, I did mention that I could actually do durations on the outlets so for example if I want to do outlet one on for 60 seconds I could do that that way that'll turn the outlet on and then after 60 seconds it'll turn it right back off and that's useful for things like uh, preparation you know warming up appliances before you know before appointments things like that this Python script is being launched by system D and so if it does crash because I'm a uh, not a great programmer it will start it right back up that way there's no uh, no circumstances for running in the in a headless condition. As far as the web interfaces go, nothing too complicated. It's essentially written in PHP with some JavaScript. Uh, PHP the PHP is pretty simple. And then the JavaScript is there to take care of actually sending out the um, the function commands as well as changing the icons from red to green depending on what their statuses are. All right, well, hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes on my little nerd project. If you do have any questions about anything about this, feel free to reach out to me. If you want to steal my code, I'm more than happy to give it out. If you want to ask me to do it for you, I will gladly decline. See ya.